Hey, what's up with us, Dan, or DMAD96 here, and welcome back to our F1 Manager crew mode with Stuart GP. And in today's episode, we will be doing the Austrian Grand Prix at the A1 Ring Circuit. Last time out, it was a disappointing race. We only finished outside the points, um, like we did in France. Uh, and we are slowly losing some points to uh, Jordan, Benetton and Williams. They're slowly catching up. So hopefully we can stay ahead of them by the end of the season. Uh, but we're coming to a track which is definitely better than France and Britain. Maybe some points could be possible this weekend. But it all depends on the car's reliability. But I hope to get points this weekend. It doesn't look impossible in my opinion. Let's take a quick look at the Drivers' Championship so far once again. Uh, it was Michael Schumacher who did win the race last time out in Britain. And he is gaining ever so slightly to Mika Hakkinen. Johnny Herbert staying in third, but Fizzy Keller really catching up, and so is Ralph Schumacher behind. It's looking very close as well. We've got Frensen catching up. Irvine caught points from the uh, previous race in France before Britain. Uh, Coulthard still on 10 points. Barry Kello struggling on 8 points still. Uh, it's looking pretty set at the top who's going to win this championship. And then the midfield looks very close, especially in this battle for third with Johnny Herbert leading a whole load of drivers. Could be very interesting by the end of the season, the Constructors' Championship. Uh, McLaren are still leading, but Ferrari have closed the gap. 14 points is the gap between both of them. We still rely in third position. However, Jordan aren't far behind, and neither are Benetton and Williams. Again, the Constructors' fight could be a very close battle for third position. Prost and BAR can't really challenge at all. I and mean, then still waiting for Arrows and Minardi to score their first points of the season. Maybe it could come this weekend. And then obviously the Team Manager Championship, we're still dominating that. Miles ahead of Ferrari and Prost, who are in second and third, and Williams uh, at the bottom. Hopefully they can get out of that position very soon. So in the last episode, we have completed our announcements with our driver lineups of uh, Driver 1, Jack Villeneuve, Driver 2, Heinz Alfred Edson, and Test Driver, Wayne Green. Uh, so that means we completed uh, the, the lineup for next year. Uh, we've already announced that. But let's go straight into the news report to see what else is confirmed for next season. To kick off the news this week, Magnetti and Rally have announced their continuation with both the Williams and Ferrari teams for the 2000 season. Also, McLaren have made the decision to switch their brakes from MR to AP. Jordan's engine speculation for the 2000 season has been the biggest talking point of the week. Ford Z-Tex seem to be the favourite, but the team have denied the speculation and are once again continuing their partnership with Mugen Honda. But despite the strong engines, they will have a tough time in the aerodynamic side with Arrows chief designer Rob Taylor taking the vacate position as Mark Smith has left to join McLaren. Lastly, Sauber complete their drive lineup with the announcement of Stephen Watson as the test driver. That's all the news for this week. Now it's time to go down to the A1 ring for the practice session of the Austrian Grand Prix. Okay, so the practice session has just finished. Mika Hakkinen, fastest in the practice session, ahead of Michael Schumacher in second, David Coulthard in third position, followed by Eddie Irvine, typical top four, really. We're not really where we wanted to be because I expect to be a little bit better than 10th and 11th behind both Benson's and the Jordans, and we've got Ralph Schumacher there as well. Hopefully, we can improve in qualifying. I was running old parts of. Uh, I believe we've actually got a new front and rear wing, and I've uh, upgraded the brakes as well for this weekend. Uh, the next race I'm going to be using the uh, new engines that we've got. So it's hoped to be better in the qualifying session, but it's time to find out if we will do in the qualifying report. You should suspect Aris and Nadi fill up the back two rows, with Marginet being the highest placed driver, whilst Pedro Niz in the Sauber qualifies ahead of his teammate John Lacey and starts 14th. The two pass line up in 16th and 17th, whilst Jack Villeneuve beats teammate Ricardo Zonta to 13th place on the grid. It was another difficult session for Stewart, however Rubens Barrichello just managed the top 10 starts. The two Bentons line up just ahead of the Brazilian, Williams driver Ralph Schumacher starts in an impressive 6th place, and the two Jordans knock out the 3rd row behind South Renton on top. It wasn't enough for Michael Schumacher as he just missed out on pole position by 2 tenths of a second, leaving Mika Hakkinen on pole once again for McLaren, but to get back ahead of his main rival after losing to him in the last two rounds. Okay, so just sorting out the strategies for the race. Uh, we're both doing one stops. Qualifying didn't really go the way we planned it to. Again, only 10th and 12th. Um, behind both Bentons and uh, Jordans and Ralph Schumacher, pretty much where we were in practice. Splitting Alessandro Zanardi. Well, uh, I should say Zanardi is actually splitting us, but. Mick Hacken on pole position is typical front row, really. Uh, Schumacher and Hacken are dominating again this season. Uh, hopefully, we can do one well in the race and just hopefully catch up to the Bentons. Hopefully, we can get some points as well. So, let's go on to the race uh, right now. Camera Rubens Barrichello in the Jordan, uh, the Stuart Evans. 
Jordan, not you. And we are underway. Rubens Barrichello getting off to a decent start. I think he's past one of Benton's. Uh, Johnny Herbert trying to get alongside him now. It's Michael Schumacher that leads into the first corner. Though Schumacher's taking the lead off Mika Hacken and just saw that going down towards turn one. Barry Kello says he's 10th, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he is actually in ninth position, but Michael Schumacher in the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. And, well, didn't expect that. Expected Hacken to run away with it, and Hacken and going very wide. Schumacher's absolutely gone into the distance. Is Michael Schumacher going to be back here at the top of Formula One? He is absolutely dominating already. It's only on the first lap. Hacking him. We can't be ruling out, out, out of contention completely. We've also got to look out for David Coulthard and Eddie Irvine, but they've been retiring in every race. Uh, so I doubt they'll be able to keep up, really. Heinz Alfredson in fifth. Damon Hill holding uh, on to sixth. We're in ninth. And Barry Kelly just make a few more positions, maybe get into the points. And straight away, Johnny Herbert's retired from the race. Driver error is the cause. For for retirement. Uh, we're going to pop Barrichello down to hold position to try and uh, keep the car safe. We don't want him retiring as well. well. He's just lost a couple of positions to um, Verts and Zanardi. He needs to keep him on push. Meanwhile, uh, we're st still on lap 16. Uh, something I forgot to mention a few laps earlier. Mika Hakkinen has retaken the lead off Michael Schumacher. He's back in the lead of this Grand Prix. Hakkinen now in command of his race. Can Schumacher challenge him? Are we just going to see Hakkinen uh, keep this lead? He is actually trying to lap, I believe that is Rubens Barrichello. But Schumacher slowly catching up behind and Schumacher trying to go around the outside and oh, almost m making that move stick there and you can see we're holding up Hakkinen massively. <laughs> Nearly getting overtaken. Fuck's sake. Well, this is going to be an eventful race then. Both our drivers are out of the race, both due to driver errors, both really my fault. Not very good to be honest. Uh, could have kept them down the whole position, but no. Uh, Barry Kelly's just retired from the race, so let's actually uh, keep going and see what actually happens. Michael Schumacher has retaken the lead though. Yeah, so we're on board with Michael Schumacher, he is leading this Grand Prix. Could he actually uh, win the race? I think though Hackenden. No, he ha uh, no Hacken hasn't pitted. He's actually overtaken Hacken on the track. So this could be an exciting battle towards the end here, which we'll lead as we just switch to Pedro Della Rosa randomly. Well, Heinz South Frenson trying to unlap himself here, trying to pass Mickey Hackenden. No, Hackenden is actually. I think he's not really gaining any time to Michael Schumacher. You can see the onboard graphic there. 1.6 seconds is the gap. Schumacher is just up the road though. I have a feeling he's coming up to traffic. So. I'm actually going to find this very exciting. This could be pretty close, I feel. Schumacher's coming to one of the Williams now as we go up to uh, the final corner. Hacken has passed Michael Schumacher and is in the lead of the Grand Prix again. So we're going to have a never-ending battle here between Hacken and Schumacher. And that is a Ferrari. Just, that is Eddie Irvine. They're going to lap now. Hackenden leads this race. Are we going to see another return to form for Hackenden? Another victory for him, maybe? Still leading for the time being, but anything can happen here in Formula 1. There he is. Schumacher has passed Mika Hakkinen. So what a battle for the lead we're having here between the two championship contenders. Schumacher coming up to lap uh, one of the Williams drivers now. Schumacher's race to lose. Uh, it's actually Minardi, not a Williams. What an exciting battle for the lead this is. Nothing much happening now. Hakkinen's dropping back now. Hakkinen's dropping back to six seconds. Behind Michael Schumacher, it looks like it's going to be a win for Michael Schumacher. Coulthard and Irvine are going to finish as well. And as soon as I say that, it's a retirement for Schumacher. The tyres have gone off that Ferrari. It's now Mika Hakkinen in the lead. Jack Villeneuve one place away from the points. Eddie Irvine is going to finish on the podium. It seems Mika Hakkinen is going to win due to the Ferrari's tyres going. An absolute shame for Michael Schumacher. But relief for Mika Hakkinen, it just means that his lead in the championship is just going to get ever bigger and bigger. He's moving to Ferrari next year. He may not do as well, but McLaren have the Ford Z-Tech engines next year, so it seems like a good move on paper. But Mika Hakkinen is round the final corner here at the 1999 Austrian Grand Prix to win. And is going to complete a McLaren 1-2 with David Coulthard second on the road. He hasn't finished race all season apart from the Australian Grand Prix 
and it looks certain that it's going to be a McLaren 1-2, the first 1-2 from any team this season. And David Coulthard, round the final few corners, it's a podium for the Scots. David Coulthard is going to be happy to return to, to form here in Austria and take second place. Damon Hill fourth, Giancarlo Fisichella fifth and Jack Villeneuve sixth. It's a very, very insane battle for the lead that was. Shame that uh, both our drivers had to retire early on. Uh, driver errors, not very good to be honest. I'm not happy with that. Uh, but Germany should be a good round next. And we are using a better engine so it should be a lot quicker. I wasn't happy with our pace at all this weekend. Hopefully we can do better in the next race. But um, the plan one two. I think it's pretty much safe to say they've pretty much won the championship, I think. Nearly anyway. Still quite a few races left to go. So in the Drivers' Championship standings now, David Coulthard is one of the big gainers. Only two points of Johnny Herbert now. Eddie Irvine not far behind as well thanks to his podium finish. Giancarlo Fisichella also keeping very close to our driver. Barrichello dropping down the order now. Not looking good for us. But Mick Hackenden still leads. Absolutely miles out of Schumacher. 25 points is the gap. Still got many races left to go. I think Hacken is going to be the favourite for this championship. Schumacher in second. No one else can really catch him. I think it's safe to say Hacken's uh, pretty much won this title unless uh, something bad happens. In the constructors' standings, McLaren are dominating really. 26 points ahead of Ferrari. And then we're behind in third quite away. We're not going to get second, that's just going to be impossible. Jordan, however, are closing back in thanks to uh, Damon Hill's. Fourth place finish and both of our drivers retiring. Benson aren't far behind as well with Fizzy Keller keeping it consistent. Williams down in sixth after not scoring as well. Uh, apart from that, not really much happening in the championship after this round. And in the team managers championship, we are still currently in the lead. But Ron Dennis now moves ahead of John Tott for second place. Williams now seems to the full back to Peter Sauber and uh, Tom Walkinshaw. But we're still leading one championship at least. We're still the best of the managers so far this season. So that has been a fairly disappointing Austrian Grand Prix. Not happy with the results. Um, we were crap all weekend to be honest. And hopefully we can regain the confidence and collect some points here at the German Grand Prix. At the old Hockenheim circuit. Of course we have a new Hockenheim circuit now in Formula 1. But yeah, this is a decent track uh, for, well, for me anyway when I play this game. Uh, I know Mercedes engines are very overpowered, so expect McLaren to be fighting at the top. But we are going to be using our new engines at this track, so it could be an exciting one. I hope it is. I think it's going to be very fun. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, so much time, guys, from DMA96, and I'll catch you guys later. You put a part inside your mind, and I know there's something between us with nothing inside. Nothing else